In this video, we'll continue the connections between the laser controller and the drivers. We'll connect the motors to the drivers, and we'll also configure the drivers for the motor's proper operation. At this point, we have the power supply connected to the laser controller to receive power and power up the laser controller. We have the two drivers connected to the laser controller digitally, so it so the laser controller can control the drivers. And we also have the drivers connected to the power supply. Now we're going to connect the motors to the drivers and we're going to configure the drivers for the motors. The motors I'm using are small NEMA 24 or 23 motors. This would normally be used in our standard laser machine. And you would normally wire the ends of these wires to another cable. And this cable would go to the driver but in this demonstration I'm just going to take these wires and go straight to the driver. Just make sure when you're wiring through a cable that specific colors of wires go to the appropriate terminal on the driver. To find the correct wiring diagram and the specifications for the motor so we can configure the driver go to buildyourcnc.com and you can just look up the motor that you want say NEMA 23 yeah this should be it here yes this is the one I'm connecting, and their diagram should be under the instructions portion of it. And it looks like we need to have the black and green go to the A, and the red and blue go to the B. The white and the yellow are not going to be connected, because we're only going to have four terminals to wire the, the motor to the driver. So we're, we're not going to use the center lead from this coil. So the coil has, half of the coil goes to a center, and then the other half goes to the other end. We really don't need that center. The other information we're going to need is the specification on the amps. And you can see that it's three amps. So we're going to have to set our driver to the maximum number of amps for that particular driver because it is three amp driver. Don't worry about the voltage too much because the more voltage we can apply to this motor, the faster the current can get through the coils. So the higher the voltage, the higher the velocity you can get on the motor. The first thing I'll do is cut the, the tips of the wires that we won't be using just so the bare wire won't be making contact to anything else that we don't want it to be. So the diagram called for the black to go to A and the green to go to A. So I'm going to take the black to A plus. And the green says C, but that's going to go to A minus because it's on the same coil. And the A plus and the A minus go to the same coil. Now on the B coil, red goes to B and blue goes to D. So red will go to B plus and blue will go to B minus. Now the blue to B minus. Okay, all of the coil wires are secure. I'm going to do the same thing to the other driver and the other motor. At this point, the motors are connected to the drivers. Now let's configure the drivers so they will function properly with the motors. To set the dip switches for the correct amps, we know that it's three amps for the motors, so we need to set the five, six, and seven switches to one, one, one. Five, one, six, and seven up is one. So up it means 
If this was sitting flat on a table, up would be away from the table. Let's do that for the other driver. So now we have these drivers set for 3 amps. When you're configuring the steps, the micro steps, you'll have to think about the mechanics that you have to move the axes in a linear motion. If you're using lead screw or timing belt, you'll need to understand the mechanics of those particular items to understand how many steps per inch you'll be getting in the output of the machine. Let's go through that exercise to see what microstepping we'll, we'll need for a particular steps per inch that we require as an output for our machine. To understand what we need for steps per inch, we'll start with that. We're going to need to know the values of certain things. First, we need to know the motor steps, the natural motor steps for a particular motor. We'll also need the number of micro steps, but this can also be an unknown, so let's skip that for now. And we also need the inch, so this is the, this relates to the step. Now we'll need the inch, and the inch will relate to the actual mechanics. So we'll need to know what the pitch diameter is, or the length that the item will move when it's rotated one single revolution. We'll go through this example for lead screw and a drive pulley. For the lead screw, we'll use a one and a half inch diameter five start lead screw. This is what the lead screw looks like. You can see that the, the threads on this lead screw look a little bit different from a normal screw. This lead screw is, is a one half inch lead screw, five starts with the, with the five beginning threads, and it's also 10 TPI. And the TPI is threads per inch. For one full turn, you're going to be going, you're going to be moving one half of an inch, which is the same thing as dividing the number of starts into the TPI, which is five divided by 10, which is one half. You can also think of this lead screw as two turns per inch. So you turn this twice and you're moving one inch. We're going to stay with the full one turn for one half inch because this also relates to the drive pulley exercise that we're going to be calculating. This will move one half inch for one full turn. So let's use that in our formula. So for inch, this will move one half, inf one half of an inch per revolution. So now we have the steps per inch is going to equal motor steps are going to be 200 steps. And the micro steps we don't know yet, so let's just find out what's what we need to do to get that number. So the formula is to get the steps, it's motor steps. Actually, let's do this at the top here. Motor steps times micro steps per step. So if the micro steps are 1 16th, it would be this number would be 16 micro steps for one step. So we would only write 16 in here. And then we're going to divide that by the inches, which is inches for one, inches per revolution, inches of travel per revolution. So now we have the formula. All we have to do is plug in the numbers. Now let's, we're going to need the micro steps to be on the other side of the formula. So let's work that out first. I'm going to take this out so we have a little bit more room here. So we have motor steps times micro steps divided by inches per revolution. So let's do some algebra. So let's take inches per revolution and put it to the other side of the formula. So we can, to get the inches per revolution to the other side of this formula, we need to multiply both sides by inches per revolution. So we can really just take this out and just multiply it by inches per revolution. So we have steps per inch times inches per revolution is equal to motor steps times micro steps. Now let's, we want to isolate this one, so we need to divide both sides by mo motor steps. So what that would do is we would eliminate the motor steps and we would divide all of this by motor steps. So micro steps is equal to steps per inch times inches per revolution, all divided by motor steps, and that's going to equal the micro steps. So now we need to plug in 
what we desire as steps per inch. So let's say we wanted to have 1000 steps per inch. So we take that and we multiply that by the inches per revolution. Well, let's do this in the in the lead screw portion of it. So we want 1000 steps per inch. We're going to multiply that by one half inches per linear length per one revolution and that we're going to divide this by the motor steps and that's going to equal our micro steps so one half of 1000 is 500 divided by 200 and that's going to be equal to 2.5 so let's see if this 2.5 is actually correct we can go back to the initial formula and we can use steps per inch, or I'm sorry, use steps which is 200 times micro steps is 2.5. We're going to divide that by the number of inches. One half inch of linear travel for one revolution. And that should equal 1000 steps per inch. So the 200 times 2.5 is 500. And that gets divided by one half inch which is equal to 1000. So that works out. Now the we don't have a 2.5 steps for our driver so we're gonna have to use the one up above that. I generally just use either 8 or 16 because I like the the quietness and the smoothness of the motion. So I'm gonna plug 8 in this slot and let's see what we get which is gonna be a lot more than a thousand steps per inch. So 8 times 200 is 1600 divided by one half is equal to 3200 steps per inch. So now let's take a look at a drive pulley. A drive pulley, we're going to have to increase the number of micro steps because drive pulleys generally have a higher travel with one revolution and you want to have that micro steps so you can get more precision out of that. So let's take a look at a drive pulley. If we take a look at a drive pulley on buildyourcnc.com we can see that the pulley has a 0 0.08 inch pitch that is from tooth crest to tooth crest. And we also know that this particular drive pulley has 20 teeth. So the 20 teeth multiplied by the pitch will give us our pitch diameter. So let's go over here and We'll use the formula that we find out what micro steps we need. So we'll take the steps per inch, which is 1000 again, and we'll multiply that by the inches per revolution, which is actually 20 teeth times 0 0.08 inches. And we're going to divide that by the motor steps, which is 200, and that will equal our micro steps. So 20 teeth times 0 0.08 is 1.6. So we're going to take our 1000, multiply it by 1.6, and then divide that by 200. That will be 1600 divided by 200, which will give us 8. So that's 8 micro steps. If you're looking for slightly more precision than 1000, and for a little bit of a safety factor, go ahead and use 16 micro steps. So we can set our drivers now to 8 micro steps, or 1 8 for both the lead screw and the drive pulley. You now have the knowledge to be able to figure out this micro steps number for any type of mechanics. As long as you know the pitch and number of teeth for the drive pulleys and you know the, the linear length per one revolution of a lead screw, you will be able to find your setting. What we need to do is find the correct micro stepping here on this table and if we look closely it's 1 8 is 0 0 1 we'll take m1 through m3 and modify it to 1 8 which is 0 0 and a 1 we'll do that on the other driver 0 0 and 1 so now the motors have been wired to the drivers and the drivers have been set correctly for 3 amps and 1 8 micro stepping. In the next video, we'll connect the limit switches to the laser controller so we can start the software installation 
to test the function of the motors. Thank you for watching.